Hello there, so if violence came up in our literature paper 1, what would we say in relation to its theme in Macbeth? So I'm going to go through my ideas, the four key points I would say in relation to this question, and for all my analysis I've colour coded it so that it matches the mark scheme, so you can see where we're picking up the marks as we go through. So, how does Shakespeare present the theme of violence? In my introduction, there's a couple of points I want to be making when it comes to violence. Shakespeare is demonstrating that violence can be a source of respect and admiration, if we want it to be. But he also shows how too much of it can lead to tyranny and a lack of respect, making your position untenable. And by untenable, it means it can't be sustained, he can't keep hold of it if you keep being violent. Now, this abuse of violence leads to damnation and destruction, just like Macbeth experiences. So the four points that I simply have to make when it comes to violence is first of all, Macbeth's violence is initially gaining in respect and honour for when he's fighting Norwegians, they, they call him Brave Macbeth saying he deserves that name so they admire him for his use of violence. But then we look at Lady Macbeth's use of the threat of violence to manipulate her husband and she uses it in a far more negative and in a far worse way and she, for example she says dash the brains out we'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. Then we see how Macbeth becomes far less comfortable with violence when it starts being used inappropriately. And the quote I've got for that is, it's a dagger that I see before me. And then I've chosen a slightly different one for the last one, which is this, Deb Butcher. And this is bringing together Macbeth's abuse of violence. By this point, he's died a tyrant and therefore he has lost his respect and he's lost his safety as a result of all the people he's killed as a result of his abuse of violence. So, paragraph one, we've got the captain here who says, Brave Macbeth, for he deserves that name. So, people respect Macbeth for his use of violence. It is a source of admiration. And it's particularly key is the captain of the army that praises him for this, showing that people of high esteem and the people of high regard in society value his use of violence and the way it's being used. Now, he's, being conformed to, he's conforming to Jacobean expectations of masculinity here because he's being violent, yet he's still treated with dignity because he's a dignified and respected man. For example, King Duncan refers to him as valiant cousin, showing he recognises his bravery and he also sees this as a family connection, having a bond with him because he's so, so close to him. Then we've also got this verb deserves, which implies he's earned this respect over time. So he's probably been using this violence in this patriotic, dignified way for quite a long period. And then we've also got the irony of this though. Now violence in the name of the king and the country is patriotic and honourable and it's praise and everyone's quick to tell Macbeth what a great guy he is when he's using violence for his king and country. However, as soon as he starts using violence for his own selfish gain, he's dismissed as a criminal, committing high treason, being an attack on God and he's being criticised not only by his peers around him but also by himself. Then I go on to paragraph 2 and I look at Lady Macbeth's use of violence now when she says she would have dashed the brains out if her son or her child had turned out like his dad, Macbeth. Now Lady Macbeth here is using the threat of violence to manipulate her husband. She's using violence to question his masculinity by doubting his ability to produce a suitable strong heir by implying that if her his children were going to be like him she might as well have killed him and dashed their brains out. Now Lady Macbeth here clashes with Jacobean expectations of women, but women should be protected from violence, they, should, they shouldn't be strong enough to have to deal with it. But here Lady Macbeth shows a comfort and uses it as a tool of manipulation. It is quite key as a wider point that Shakespeare then shows her demise and Lady Macbeth's downfall because she can't actually cope with this violence. So this is, turns out to be quite a misguided quite confused and uh, poor choice of hers to start involving herself in violence in this way. I'd look at the verb dashed. Now this has got an image of power and a force which juxtaposes with the image of the innocent baby that's having its brains bashed out. So this shows Lady Macbeth's rejection of maternal pressures and limits and it also reflects her view of Macbeth as being too babyish to follow through with this terror. Now despite the horror of this violence, Lady Macbeth is using it to inspire and push Macbeth into achieving his ambition. So here we see violence being used as an act of love and trust and not just something to be um, to be an example of tyranny with, an example of something to be critical of. Then I go on to paragraph 3 and now I'd look at Macbeth shifting his violence when he says, Is this a dagger I see before me when he's going on his way to kill King Duncan? So Macbeth is no longer comfortable with violence when it becomes a tool for selfish gain and this is clear because he started hallucinating because he's even used before he's even used the dagger which reflects his guilt and his shame at the use of this violence. Now Macbeth is using violence here to destroy the great chain of being and play God by deciding who is king so his violence here is an attack on all of society and God's power. 
I'd look at the noun dagger. Now a dagger is a weapon you'd have in secret, it's something you'd hide away. So this shows a secrecy and a cowardice in his actions and his use of violence now. And then I'd go a little bit further and look at a quote a little bit further on this same soliloquy when he says he is walking with Tarquin's ravishing strides towards Duncan. Now if you can't remember, Tarquin is a, a famous Roman rapist. Um, so it's quite key that Macbeth compares himself to a rapist or in this case he's going to go and kill King Duncan. Now I believe that this shows the juxtaposition of his brutal violence with the meek innocence of Duncan and that is akin to almost a rape of his dignity and his respect. There is no moral justice for his actions and this use of violence here to kill the king is a complete humiliation for all involved, just like a rape. So finally, paragraph four. Uh, this is a line from King Malcolm when King Malcolm's just been made king after Macbeth has been killed by Matt Duff and he denounces him as a dead butcher. So Macbeth's death is celebrated. His legacy has been dismissed by King Malcolm. He's been defined by his use of violence because of the one word they use is butcher, which is obviously associated with the violence. And his tyrannical use of violence has cost him his life, his respect, his friends and his wife. Now, Jacobean King is under pressure to maintain his rule, and this is something we need to remember. So, Macbeth's paranoia and fear drove him to use violence rather than trust those around him like King Duncan. But both King Duncan and Macbeth both die. So, Shakespeare is showing that both of these approaches have flaws. Not using violence is not great, but also using violence is also not great. So, what is a respectable Jacobean man meant to do in such a conflicted society? I'd look at the noun butcher, the fact that you describes him as a butcher, connotes someone who kills for their own profit. If you're killing animals and you're selling them as a butcher, you're gaining profit, you're gaining something out of it, which would suggest that Macbeth is killing to help himself. But it also outlines the scale of the death because butchers must kill every day, but it also shows the indignity of the crimes committed. If he's comparing Macbeth to a butcher, it's implying he's killing people like they're animals, like he's got no care and no concern for them. Now, this is quite a significant misunderstanding of Macbeth. Macbeth is a reluctant villain. He is not a butcher. He hasn't killed for fun. He's not trying to kill for his own profit or anything, but he's killing out of fear and paranoia. And he's afraid and scared because in the life that he's manipulated into by his wife and the riddles of the supernatural. He never chose and asked to be this. And at the start of our play, he was very happy with his position in the great chain of being. He's been put in a situation he's not been able to deal with and handle. And that is why he's had to resort to violence so much. However, Malcolm doesn't care. He doesn't give a damn about that. Macbeth's violence and his overuse of violence has defined him even in death. <laughs>